This is the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast, hosted by David Charlton, and you're listening to this podcast to help you build your own mental toughness, or so that you can support other people or your clients better. Either way, you will learn more about developing this plastic personality trait that all but guarantees that you will perform better and lead a more prosperous life. A big welcome to episode 144 of the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with your host, David Charlton. Now, this episode is going out one week after Remembrance Day, which has been observed every year since 1919 with a two minute silence across the UK. And coincidentally, the theme today is going to be mental toughness and resilience in the military. I go on to chat with John Watkins, who's now a resilience and transformation coach and was formerly a special forces soldier. John shares fantastic insights into some seriously difficult challenges that he overcame in the special forces and how important his mindset was. Goal settings introduced, concepts such as self-leadership, natural resilience, adaptive resilience and psychological safety we also touch on and a whole lot more. Enjoy. Hi, John, would you like to explain to the listeners a little bit about your background and like working in the special forces? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, like uh, like a lot of people, I was sort of lost a little bit at, uh, at A-levels and uh, and then into university, to be honest. It's like, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Uh, and by pure accident, to be honest, I stumbled across the Royal Marines. There was just a, a natural fit with, on reflection now, my values at the time, I didn't know what it was, but it just felt right. So I spent sort of three and a half, four years in the Royal Marines, tour of Afghan. I uh, got to do some do some good stuff in the Corps, and then yes, went um, went on selection and and uh, ended up in in British Special Forces. Spent about four years there. Had a great time, to be honest, absolutely great time. Um, obviously, can't can't talk too much about it. Try try not to at all. But it's a fascinating environment to to, to be in, to be honest. Um, it's a very high performance environment without without trying to be a high performance environment, if that makes sense. You know, we didn't have all those supports, the psychologist, the mental skills coach. It was built built very much around culture um, and the selection process. So the selection process really created individuals that were all singing off the same same song sheet. Uh, and that just created this, this, this really fantastic environment. And a few things really, really stood out for me. Everyone's a leader, which I think is an absolute great message to, to push and, and one that frustrates me now that I'm in the world I'm in now that I don't see that everybody's a leader, everyone's responsible, everyone's got to add value. And self-leadership is, is, a, is a huge part um, of, of what we were about. Um, but the bit I love the most about, uh, about the environment where the values weren't just about what was written on the wall, you just delivered it day in, day out. And that's made it an absolutely fascinating place to be. And at times, very felt very, very safe, very, very safe place to be. Some of the things I did pushed my comfort zone to the absolute, absolute max um, when I was there. Uh, I can remember I was a, uh, the first time I put crampons on, picked up my ice axes, roped up to do some sort of, um, uh, sort of ma- mountaineering work was actually at, the, at uh, above Chamonix, just looking straight up at Mount Blanc. And we did a route, we did a climbing route that some climbers spend sort of two, five, seven years training for. I'd never put this stuff on, never put this equipment on before. And I was walking, I was walking out of this, um, onto this glacier. And there was this walk that was probably just big enough for one person. One side, you're dropping down to Chamonix, 3000 feet. The other side, you're dropping down to the glacier, which is about 200 feet. I'd never worn crampons so then I'm, I'm, I'm walking I'm walking like some sort of uh chicken and uh, uh yeah yeah probably probably the best describe it, a goose maybe um with these axes which I had no idea what to do and I had these Italian and French tourist mountaineering specialists just hurling abuse at me because I was taking up all the space why didn't I jump off to the side and let them go past and I was like if I jump, I'm, I'm gonna die if I jump off to the side and there they are running around me and that was it that was that was that was my first exposure to to mountaineering go climb a route that some people spend five years training for and that was life that was life 100 mile an hour totally relentless something new every day new challenge every day um and what held it together was 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 you and and the culture which was absolutely fascinating to be part of um 
and I lo- and I loved every minute of it. I got medically discharged in the end, so cut short. Um, I had my time cut short, sadly. Can I just take you there back to where you talk about like new challenges every day? Yeah. Surely you must have you must have to have some sort of mindset in order to to be able to really like take those challenges by the by the bulls by the horns yeah. and uh, and go for it. Yeah, I can remember when we first spoke, didn't we? About a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about that sort of word mental toughness, didn't we? Um, and I suppose that there's a big element of of that in 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 what we were about. And although I'm a, I'm a resilient specialist now, and I see them as two different things, but maybe that's a podcast in itself. But yeah, we were we were really mentally. Well, this is all on reflection, you know. Looking back now, I was we were mentally and physically very robust, and the selection process, you know, made sure we were we were of the right ilk to be able to to reach those levels. Um, and yes, there was huge amounts of um, self leadership, huge amounts of discipline that were required. Um, you know, you had to put faith in yourself, what you were told, the instructions you were given. Uh, you know, I mean, I spent a lot of years training to get to this stage. And someone asked me the other day, "How did you do that? That climb around the Agil de Mini, which is that route I was talking about earlier?" Um, and I had no technical skills, no technical skills really whatsoever. So I had to rely on this 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 sort of mental toughness um that, that that I've built over years and years and years or did I when I thought back to it did I really rely on that because I was absolutely crap in my pants to be frank um it was the exposure was was hideous and you just go back to some very basics you know one foot in front of another just focus focus on short-term goals instead of that huge mountain you've got to climb but my faith was really put in which is a big value of of, of the world I lived in was on the people around me totally reliant on the people around me and I just had to do my very very simple job of one foot in front of the other and I knew that they would they would look after me which is which is a very strange feeling to be in but you know we're talking that that psychological safety really there aren't we yeah on that theme when you're talking about goal setting there so the yeah. I suppose you know the, the mentally tough person he is going to is likely to be a goal setter but what, what sort of um mistakes do you think people make when it comes down to their goals which mean they they, they end up getting distracted yeah so if you know the, the, the bit i didn't mention with mental toughness is we were trained and selected based on perseverance that's a huge part of it you know i'm not saying that's for everyone and you know potentially some of us were at a different level and actually it can, comes at a cost massive cost mental toughness uh but in terms of goal setting some of the some of the things i i see now is um first of all sense of purpose behind what you're doing i always ask people when i'm you know when i'm when i'm training them we always talk about that word why often we use why in completely the wrong context you use it in in your decision making you use it in difficult conversations why did this happen why did you do this when you're talking in teams why needs to be tucked away a lot of the time and hidden for who what where when but actually when you when you start to think about your goals you need to ask yourself why am i doing this and you can really start to relate it back to your your values and, and who you are at your core. I think that's really important. The other thing people tend to get wrong is they just look far too broad and far too big. So I always say when I'm working with people, you just need to break these things down. It's really important that you you, you know you push your your comfort zone or what I call you find a stretch goal. It's where you get purpose, fulfillment. It's where you get your growth from. Is when you find um, something that stretches you, but it has to be the right level of stretch for you. Now, actually, you can tailor any stretch to yourself and what you're capable of by breaking it down. Um, And I call that breaking it down into priorities. So you set you set yourself a goal. Why do I want to do this? You do the usual time frame. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? Why do I want to do it? Then you break it down into small manageable chunks. That for me is absolutely essential. Sounds obvious, but lots of people don't do it. Break it down into priorities and then break it down again. So You've got these wider priorities. Break it down into smaller actions you can take on a day-to-day basis. Life gets in the way of goals. We all know that. We've spoken about it. Life gets in the way. It throws curveballs at you. So actually, you want your focus to be very much on the present. What can I do now that's going to help me move towards my goal or move me towards one of my priorities? So you then focus on those actions that you repeat daily. Maybe it's once. Maybe you just have to do it once. That's that sort of stage two I say priorities stage two actions stage three is the bit that lots of people forget about belief because again what gets in the way it's your mindset it's your belief so you've got to start to think okay for me to perform those actions so if I want to buy a house 
I need to I need to save money and build a deposit priority one save money build a deposit to help me save money and build a deposit I might have to cancel my subscription to Sky for instance that's an action I can do that what do I need to tell myself in my head when I'm crying in a pillow at night because I can't watch any of the sport that I absolutely love actually everyone needs to take you know, we all need to make a sacrifice there's something bigger here that I'm aiming for so actually you start to break your goals down priorities actions beliefs and write it down, stick them down. And I could talk a little bit more about this um, because there's a couple of other key elements that I find people really miss. Um, but happy to stop there if you if if, if you want, David. Oh, no, that's great. I mean, so far what you've, what you've mentioned there, I totally agree with you. Yeah. When you said about breaking it down and then breaking it down again, it literally, it's, I suppose it's just spending that time, isn't it, to actually break it down and to get a real clear-cut strategy is, is so, so vital um yeah go on carry on um with <laughs> no 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 i think i think you're right and you know when people work with with people like ourselves coaches that's what we do isn't it um we we help people get a bit of clarity of thought break it down into things they can they can achieve and it was no different when i was on the mountain all right i look at the whole thing and there's no way i can tackle that in my head even though i've done all that training mental toughness all of those other things you associate with with self leadership um so i just break it down into manageable manageable chunks every step so anyway, once so once you've got that together, the bit that people really yeah, you know, so pe- some people are very good at that. They keep it in their head. You have to get it down on paper. You have to see, especially those actions, those beliefs written down on paper. Why am I doing this? What do I need to tell myself in my head to achieve this action? Then what you've got to do is you've got to remember to trip over your goals. There's no point in setting it and then hoping it's going to take care of itself. It takes effort. It takes time. You've already gone through the process. You know why you want to do it. There's a huge sense of fulfillment at the end of it waiting for you. There's lots of growth potential. You've, you've, you've planned it. You've set it down on paper. You have to trip over it. Life gets in the way. So f- find ways to trip over it daily. That could be something as simple as um, use, use you know, we all, we all have a password we use on our, on our computer. Type a keyword in that just reminds you of what you're trying to, what you're trying to achieve. Find someone that can help you can help uh, be your mentor. Find someone who's going through exactly what you're going through. I was at university living, living an absolute dream when I was, um, training for the Royal Marines. The only reason that I got up at six o'clock and went for booted runs was because Fitzy ran the corner and was doing exactly the same thing. So we just fed off each other. So important to find someone that you can uh, you, you can lean on in those times. So trip over goals, absolutely trip over it. The third one, uh, the third thing I'd suggest is monitor progress. You have to monitor progress, especially over the longer term ones, but over the short term ones uh, as well. You have to constantly stop every week and go am I moving closer or further away from where I want to be often sorry go on yeah, I was going to say you're right that that yeah. whole measurement of your goals is yeah. is vital isn't it yeah yeah you, you have to know okay so what do I need to get back on track or what do I need to do to maintain this progress uh, and the bit I'd always say and I always remember when my my brother was um training for the London Marathon um and I just I just checked in with him about four, about, about three months ago. So the point where this was starting to hit 12, 16 miles. And I remember checking in with him uh, and I was just like, how's it going? And suddenly you get this wave of negativity because things haven't gone well. He's been really busy at work for four to six weeks. He hasn't gone on a run. You know, he's not very confident he's going to do it. He might have to pull out. But that's the point where you actually that's the monitor goals part. Because it's not just assessing progress, but actually you're doing something that I call grab the good building confidence and competence. Okay, so what have I done really well? Three things that have gone really well. Three things that are going really well. A couple of things I might want to fail forward on and learn from and do slightly differently over the course of the next few weeks. But actually, when I started to do it with my brother, I started to go, well, you remember you remember, you took my dog for a walk at the weekend? Did you stand still and throw the ball? He goes, no, we went for two hours. We were up on the North Coast. And I, did, oh, I did some running, actually. Okay, so you went for two hours up and down cliffs. Right, that's not bad. And I knew how he got into work every day. So I said, how do you get into work every day? He goes, do you know what? I cycle every day. Lots of hills, up and down. Okay, so there's plenty of exercise there. And he goes, do you know what? I actually went for a run about three weeks ago. I did eight miles, completely forgot. And suddenly he's got this confidence, self-esteem starting to, to, to build again just by simply just monitoring progress. Because you just put it aside. You just get in the flow. We all live at 100 miles an hour. That's the modern world. Whoop, jump in your lane, off you go. You have to pause sometimes just to monitor where you're at and remember to to grab the good, focus on the things you're doing well. Because he went out for a run the next day, not saying I necessarily had a huge influence on it, but I'll take it. Um, And he did it. He did 16 miles. 
it is very true. Yeah. I mean, as, as you say, I suppose our role in that is to to help them see it, shift their perspective, essentially, because um, yeah, people just get, as you said, very, very busy, and they, they're not very good at, I suppose, learning, really, are they, in that respect? No, no, we've got busy, haven't we? Got our lives, got work. We've also got our mindset just naturally begins to, to work against us as well, doesn't it? But um, yeah. so anyway, yeah, we talked about goals. There's 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 ten minutes on on goal setting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. So yeah. how how would you actually define mental toughness then in you know in the special forces? Uh do you know what? It's it's something um it's something I never thought of and we never we've never we never really considered it um before. Um and I haven't really got it's one of those phrases that I could probably write a paragraph trying to explain it. But from my perspective, what I saw when I saw mental toughness um, in action, it was all centered around that perseverance and never giving up. That was a huge part of it. I know some people, you know, I've had lots of discussions about people defining resilience and mental toughness and people flick them. They see them the same, see them as different. But for me, mental toughness is, is built around that perseverance, never giving up element to it. Um, and we were very, we, you know, we were very, very, very very good at that that was what selection process was about but actually there were lots of other traits involved um you know we've already talked about self-leadership being able to perform under pressure it's a hugely important element to to the world i lived in decision making under pressure as well absolutely key to what we were doing focusing on what we can control focusing on our strengths optimism all of those elements that enable you to deliver your technical skills under that huge amount of pressure that was certainly part of it but the other aspect that i think some people probably don't don't necessarily consider is i'd probably wrap it under discipline i think probably the word i would use is discipline and a huge part of our mental toughness was that discipline um discipline to 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 live through our values that was that was a hugely important because it takes energy sometimes to to humor in the face of adversity those sorts of phrases you know it's not it's not always easy to do that but it's a great discipline to 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 live our lives through our values at that moment and in time we were all self-leaders. There was no one running our lives for us. We ran our own lives. Um, and that was a huge part of, 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 of that world. So things like going out and, you know, you've, you've just come off an operation or, you know, you've worked a 17 hour day because you've done a, something at night, some training at night. And you've got to go up and you've got to go and do fizz, get yourself in the right shape to be able to do all the different demands, whether that's scaling a mountain, a cliff, walking long distances, short term, um, short-term work um so that all, all came into it so all of those elements i think wrap up to to that sort of mental toughness but i suppose the easiest way for me to describe it and talk about it is is from the world i live in now you know i'm a resilience specialist i see them as kind of two different things mental toughness comes more at a cost to the people around you whereas res- resilience is is not but i suppose you can still still wrap it up when you think of resilience because you know a lot of people think of resilience very much as bouncing back don't they that's the word that people use to describe resilience and there's part of it that's associated with that but there's there's actually three different types of resilience there's natural resilience you know with human beings we're born with it our strengths our values um heavily influenced by our environment and we you know we we are who we are and guys in the the world i used to to live and work in have got a huge amount of that natural resilience you then got the second one, which is adaptive resilience. And I think this is the one that most people really associate with um, and relate to. And it's very much built around bouncing back. And, and that is you go through adversity, you go through these difficult times, you learn and grow from it. Sometimes that adversity is so big, you don't learn and grow and you know you, you go seek help elsewhere. But when you do learn and grow, you get this 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 um this adaptive resilience that you, you can train the military is all part of that you put yourself in tough situations controlled through training people learn and grow um and that's a that's a huge part of it and that is what i associate with bouncing back and where that sort of mental toughness comes in where the world i live and work in now is the third type of resilience which is which we we call restored resilience or actually what i call learned resilience uh, and that becomes really, really powerful because actually what you're showing people, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, is a set of, you know, the, the set of skills. So you're giving people a skill. So the thing with adaptive and natural resilience and mental toughness to kind of wrap up in the same bracket is it can be limited to your environment. So we, you know, I really struggled when I you know, left the military because I was just in a completely different environment. I had lots to offer, but I couldn't adapt because I didn't have the skills. I was used to that sort of natural and adaptive resilience, whereas you give people those those skills that they can learn then not only can they apply it to bouncing back 
naturally elevating their natural resilience, but actually you go from good to great and you bounce forward and that becomes even more powerful, I think. And when I look back over my time in the military, I had lots of adaptive resilience, put in lots of situations where I learned, I grew, failed often, supported through it. Um, and, and it certainly built my adaptive resilience, I had the natural resilience um, through my life, but I never had that sort of restored or learned resilience. Um, and you know, knowing those skills now, I would have been much better if I'd known them 10 years ago. And it certainly you know, it enabled me to take that much more performance and my well-being and the culture I live and work in to a whole different level. Um, and I think that's that's probably, yeah. So when I think of mental toughness, I think more of that sort of natural and adaptive um resilience. And I know they're combining two different two different things there. But um yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. You you touched on one thing there where you, where you talk about the like the military there and the controlled challenge and then the support in order to to learn how you know, how to be more resilient or yeah. um i'm just thinking i wonder if in high performance sport if they could actually learn quite a few lessons from the like the military in that respect what, what are your thoughts yeah I th- you know i think you know if we if we think about high performance if we think about high performance sport in the military they, they are different but they are very similar they are very similar, you know, high performance sport is building to that one moment um, at the end of a week, whereas the military potentially, you don't know when that moment's going to arrive. And I heard someone describe the other day, the military are constantly playing away from home, which I thought was interesting. But yes, you know, the military, there's a big phrase. Um, and I know a lot of people in my world have talked to, high, you know, talked to the sports world about this, but it's, um, you know, it's train hard, fight easy. Training was always, always harder than anything you'd expect in combat with to, to, to within reason. Obviously, there are some situations you find in where you just you just can't prepare for. Um, but the training was always made a lot harder. Um, and I think the bit that surprises people in my old environment, you know, you know the more elite you go, the more the, the more different it becomes. So I can remember doing one training exercise um, and I messed it up bad. I messed it up bad. I was standing at the top of a three-story building, not particularly high up, and all I had to do was abseil down um, one one floor, essentially, um, and enter with my team through the window. Now, I was holding some explosives, so I was using a device where you don't have to properly abseil, you just use a lever. I pulled the lever too hard, in essence, and I just dropped. Dropped about 30 feet in a half split second, and I would have broken half, half my body if I'd crashed into the floor, probably more than 30 feet. Um, with all the weight I was holding. Luckily, I let go and I stopped about that far off the floor. Now, you would be expecting at that point, given that the team can't enter, evolution kind of ruined for those those people up, up, up there. That's one team out of the equation. As the directing staff come over, you're expecting to get roasted. I didn't get that at all. I did not got, get that at all. In fact, I got something that I, I talk more and more on around fail forward. It's like, okay, what could you different, do differently next time, John? And I go, well, I'm probably not going to pull it as hard. He goes, right, off you go then. Go do it again. You know, it was, it was almost comical, you know, and it's not, you know, these things didn't happen all the time. No one else did that um, at any point in the four years that I was I was there. Um, but it was how we reacted to it that's very, very, very different. Um, so that then elevates the training that you're going through, that, that environment, that communication um that i suppose application of resilience within a team environment that um that makes a huge huge difference so train train hard fight easy I, I, you know i don't know you know you've, you've done a bit of work in corporate world but it's the same isn't it everything that's happening in a corporate world is happening for real there's no there's no there's no way you can train there's 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 no way you can develop outside of that it's happening for real that's incredibly difficult um and it's something that the military specializes in train hard fight easy hugely important you train you train for match conditions it was clear as well when you're talking about that mistake you've been offered i suppose yeah some really effective communication at the other end and and in support essentially whereas in lots of cultures be that in the workplace be it in, in sport somebody would have come down on you uh, like a ton of bricks and then your reaction would have been very very different yeah it is yeah i think you forget that don't you in a high performance environment you're still humans still vulnerable to the same human factor that caused drop off in everyone. You can't just scream and shout at everyone. And I was talking to a, a rugby team about this um, a few months ago, and they were surprised when I said that even when you're on selection, you don't get screamed and shouted at. The normal military, even the Royal Marines, the elite military unit, you know, there is still that element of you know, discipline, command and control, lots of, lots of raised voices. But we didn't do that in my world. It just wasn't there. 
even when people made a mistake, you didn't have to shout and scream about it. People knew they'd made a mistake. It was more about how do we move forward from this as opposed to how do we dwell on it and make the other person feel really bad. Um, and that was my that was, you know, one of the first introductions to, to, to that sort of way of doing things. So, yeah, there's a lot of shouting and screaming that's done. Um, people, I think I've, I've heard it referred to now as old fashioned coaching that's going out the window in sport. You know, it's, it, it has its uses at times. Sometimes people do need to kick up the backside. But most of the time, you know, it can have a negative impact on people and culture. That's the key. You know, it's not necessarily that moment in time where it's going to negatively affect it. But three months down the line it could really be negatively impacting because it's now become part of your culture to do that. Um, so, yeah, yeah. No, I completely agree. We, you know, we could go on for hours talking about this one there quite easily. <laughs> yeah, we could. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm well aware of the time there, uh, John, are you able just to summarize really what we've talked about there for the listeners into three nice little takeaways? Yeah. Um, so I think, So we've obviously got the goal setting piece. That's really important. You know, we talk about resilience. We talk about anything in life, being able to set a goal and go out and make it happen is really important. The key to it for me is stretch goals. Find something that pushes you out of your comfort zone that you need somebody else's help to help you to achieve it. Without that help, you might, you might, you might trip and fall. Um, It might not, might not happen. When you set those stretch goals and you achieve them, you grow confidence, self-esteem, and actually it gives you the energy to move to the next level. That's that's key. So that's one aspect. The other thing I'd, I'd like people to go away and think about, um, and I see this a lot, uh, and you know, I'm sure you've got a take on it as well. We're a world that's obsessed with technical skills. Even in high performance sport, there seems to be a big push for the technical skills, technical skills, technical skills. Now, I'm not dismissing technical skills, but actually the world I came from, high performance was more about your mental, emotional, and social skills not just your technical skills. And I think we've become too obsessed with technical skills. And that's in all aspects of life. You know, if people have those skills to be able to lead themselves, lead others, create the culture and environment around them that enables all to thrive, then you get a far better result at the end of the day than just relying on technical skills. Um, and I think that's, for me, when I look at sport and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my head, I've got some, you know, Jurgen Klopp spoken about this a few times, haven't he? And, you know, Chelsea are going through something similar. You want everybody aligned, um, everybody on the same page, because it's not just about technical skills. Actually, I'd go one step further than beyond alignment to, you know, you want everybody to, to try and live and breathe these, these mental, emotional and social skills. That to me is far more powerful than, than technical skills. I know people push back on that. You need technical skills, especially in professional sport, but that's the bit people neglect. Um, the other thing I, I would say, and it's come up a few times in, in what I've said, um, and it's a really difficult one to get across in a podcast, and it's not something new to people, is when you start to live your life through your values and what I'd call your character strengths, your positive personality traits, everything else just fits into place. Uh, and that's that is that go you know in the team you're living and working in at home um your social life when you when you when you when you start to understand and recognize what your values are how to bring them alive through your character and your personality huge sense of fulfillment achievement happiness productivity performance all those buzzwords that we could throw around and i've mentioned that a few times because i i by accident fell into three places that just enabled me to do that Royal Marines, I then grew even more when I went UK Special Forces. My values just fit into them. My strengths, my values really connected with the Royal Marines. My values and my strengths really connected with UKSF. And I just grew even more when I was there. Unfortunately, that journey was cut short. And then now where I am again, um, it's just elevated to a whole new level. So those are the those are the three big things. We talked about goal setting, but mental, emotional and social skills Um at least on parity, if not above technical skills. And if you can live through, you live, identify and live your life through your values and your, your character strengths, then you're onto a winner. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is, John. Well, I'm going to add a little one, one little thing here. Yeah. And what I would say is you've got to take the time to actually look at your values as well on a regular basis and reassess. Exactly, reassess. Yeah. Maybe you maybe you need to take make a few little changes and adaptions, just depend on where you are in your life. Totally, um, things, totally, yeah. As you say, things happen, don't they? Um, but but yeah, no. Look, they they yeah. it's, it's a great way to end the podcast. So yeah, big a big thank you there. Um, no worries. Thanks for having me.
Yeah, no worries at all. Whereabouts can the listeners reach out to you, John, um, if, they, if they want to have a conversation or get in touch? Yeah, so um, I'll, pro- I'll provide you with this, David. And you just, you know, stick it, stick it wherever you want. But the best way to reach me at, at the moment is 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 via email or LinkedIn. So it's John Watkins uh, on on LinkedIn or or John at resiliencetraining.co.uk if you want to chat on on email. Um, and what I would say is, if you do want to get in touch, um, and if you head to my LinkedIn page, you can sign up to things like our newsletters, our own podcast. Uh, because what's going to happen in the next week or two weeks, which, which is why I can't really offer it now, is we've just remodeled our um, our online program and we're looking for people to trial it. So there'll be an opportunity to trial one of our uh, one of our online modules all around stress less. It's 11 skills. So we're very much skills based. Um, it's all about action, as you can probably tell from the last 30 minutes. Um, so there's that opportunity. So if you're interested in that or any other conversation, then get in touch. And those are the two best ways email or or linkedin or check the website out um, and that's resilience training.co.uk brilliant those details will go in the show notes um so as i say big you know big thank you no, it's been a pleasure thanks for having me i really enjoyed recording that episode learning from people who are from different backgrounds i find so beneficial and i hope that you do too so what was your biggest learning or reminder there from that episode feel free to share it with me via an email at info at sport-excellence.co.uk or by sending me a message through the Sports Psychology Hub community that I've put together on Facebook. The details for the Sports Psychology Hub are in the show notes. You may also be interested in episodes 114 and 123 where Tim Bradshaw and Richard Dorney also talk about their experiences in the military too. And again, they go on to share some valuable insights. So until next week, have a great week. If you enjoyed this episode of the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with David Charlton, do check out my website, sport-excellence.co.uk and my online sport psychology resources. The Sport-Excellence website has essential resources for anyone looking to build their own mental toughness or the mental toughness of their athletes or teams, or if you want to achieve peak performance more often or optimal functioning. The Sport Excellence website has everything you need to keep moving forward and thrive. So go on, head over to sport-excellence.co.uk to find out more.